And we're live. Hello. Yeah. Hello, everyone. This is Christiana El Trayan for the Prani Festival Online. And we are here today with Dr. Hi. Sudhir Sa, who Hi. is uh, the director of a great hospital in Amenabad. And uh, he's going to share with us his uh, great scientific discoveries in uh, pranic lifestyle in breatharianism. He has been uh, interviewing uh, and monitoring, sorry, monitoring Prala Jani, oh, the yogi who is and, nourished uh, by prana. Share with us his uh, great scientific discoveries. The yogi who is nourished by prana for more than se uh, 70 years now. So he's going to share the discoveries that he has encountered in his uh, hospital uh, study on this great yogi. Dr. Sai, if you would be so kind to exit, you want to exit full screen now, share screen, or you want to keep the share screen on? Uh, uh, as you wish, you want me to... Uh... We would love to see you first. <laughs> oh, I'm stop sharing, okay. Mm -hmm. so oh, okay, there yeah. you are. Thank you very happy much. Happy Sunday to all of you and uh, happy Sunday evening here. I don't know, the Sunday noon there. <laughs> mm. Yeah. So how Thank are you, you all? For namaste. Being... namaste, namaste. Namaste. Tell, tell me, how are you all? So uh, how much time we have? It is already uh, four. For me, the time four. is unlimited. You take as much time as you need. I am not at the moment oh, pressed by good. time. One hour, one hour and People a half. Are, okay. I'll finish before six o'clock, most likely. And uh, we'll have a wonderful time together. And uh, we'll try to understand Indian perspective of meditation and some scientific Western proof all together in one, one presentation. Meditation and this stuff. Um, am I audible properly? Yes, I, I, we hear you very well. We're uh, still having people join us. In the meantime, you can um, just one recommendation is if possible, there's a very strong light behind you that kind of blurs your face. If somebody could put off the light behind you. Oh, it's it's better, I think. Yeah, we see you better. better. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. Thank Give you for that. Now, does it give a little better or this is better? It's very one. good. It's okay. Yes, we see you. Thank you for being here. And uh, can you please share with us, first of all, what is your opinion about pranic lifestyle and the possibility of being nourished by prana? What do you, what are your uh, thoughts about it? Well, pranic lifestyle is the science of today and tomorrow. Why I say tomorrow? Because science has to literally prove it in a proper footing and bring it into the textbooks. But as of now, we the people, you know, working on this know that this is the real science and therefore it's the science of today. But in the scientific research should uh, uh, properly testify. I, I'm aware of some research, including mine, uh, which uh, testifies that this is a way of uh, uh, life, you know. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, it is time for the human race to understand that uh, we can survive on sources other than calories. And uh, human body is equipped that way that we can uh, live on pranic energy and kind of thing. The crux of the issue is we have to understand the techniques, how best we can absorb the energy from cosmic sources to run the planet. And uh, that is where exactly the research should be focused. And as for example, we can take the energy from the sun, the air, the earth, the water, the living animals, human beings, plants, etc. With all the way energy around us and we need to know. So somebody may be able to take energy from the sun through pineal gland and that is your photosynthesis. Somebody through breathing, so from air. So all different ways of... Um, so, uh, so I think uh, the next decade will uh, bring a lot of research of different ways to 
uh, vibe the energy from the different cosmic sources and uh, we have to understand how those different roots can be you know uh, entered into the uh, pranic body so that is what i understand that's how i look at it there is definitely role of mind in this so it as a mind has to decide conviction with conviction right so that is the another part and the meditation the yogic practices the the chanting the uh, the pinans austerity uh, chanting all these things are very useful in this bio transformation so that is why i have taken meditation today is one of the ways to I hope uh, all of you would uh, like to you know, know some details of meditation. Okay. Am I audible or not audible yes, properly? Yes, we hear you very well. It's very okay. uh, the sound is perfect. It's just we also hear the other people talking in the room, but it's good that we hear you. <laughs> Thank you for. Thank you for your opinion. So we have focused on this festival mainly on the solutions in the time of change. There's an unprecedented time in um, human history where we're facing high upgrade in technology, but not so much in health. Obviously, we're not able to cope with the flu that is going on all over the world. And uh, this has disrupted the whole system. Uh, not necessarily in a bad way for everyone, but in a way that is making us uh, raise some questions about our efficiency and our health efficiency as well. Uh, what do you think would be a solution or what's your personal solution for your life and for your family in this time? Well, uh, we have to observe the uh, rules uh, very Uh, cautiously, we have to follow all the instructions like social distancing, or uh, hand hygiene, face hygiene, and uh, washing the hands properly, and uh, to have hot water drinking, gargling, and things to raise the immunity. Something like. Uh, curcumin or things like those you can it can be useful but i believe that immunity is the function of prana and uh, if we have proper pranic energy uh, because pran directly sustains the breathing and uh, the vital force immediately behind breathing is prana and uh, if you are very good at uh, pranic energy like you are so i think uh, that can avert lot of problems done by this virus the virus has main habitat in the nose and then throat and then chest so to keep this system clean with pranayam and breathing techniques and do those uh, gargling and having hot water should help what do you say What is your feeling about that? I always looked at how we can improve and how we can upgrade our human body because I feel that we're only using a very small percentage of our capacity. People are talking about the capacity of the brain and how we use, you know, 10, 15%. There's this myth. I believe now, hopefully, most of humanity is using more. <laughs> But normally, uh, they're just referring to the brain. What about the body? I mean, what does what can the digestive system do? If we look at it closely, we see that when uh, when in a fasting mode, there has been discoveries that uh, the digestive system produces uh, 400 to 500 percent more melatonin than the brain. That's one of the studies that I found. I didn't check the accuracy, but it makes you wonder what can our gut system really do, and what is it for exactly? Is it just made for digestion, or does it have another property which is correlated to what we call the gut feeling or the feeling of intuitive insights and uh, circulating the energy in a certain way that uh, it modulates our whole health? 
basically when we have a healthy gut system and it's just now for some years starting to be discussed before it was completely ignored when we have a healthy gut system we can uh, thrive uh, in all areas of our health starting with absorbing the nutrients which otherwise cannot be done that's what most people are malnourished to some level and uh, continuing with the quality of our uh, endocrine glands functioning, continuing with uh, our um, exactly our immunity building and how uh, our organism is capable to deal with uh, cases like this or even stronger cases. And we've seen people that when they have a good lifestyle and a good mindset, they can heal things even more dangerous than that. I have friends that have healed cancers four times or um, several other things that had to do only with the strength of their body and the strength of their mind. So the way we circulate our energy and the way we look at our body, not only at the, as a device or as a sack of bones and muscles and skin, <laughs> if we look at it as the temple of the divine, we can actually circulate that divine energy to a potential that has been maybe unprecedented in Western culture. Uh, what about the people who have the capacity to bilocate or transform their body into a rainbow body <laughs> and then disappear when they choose to leave this planet and dissolve their bodies? What about the ones who are living for hundreds or thousands of years? What about the ones who are able to duplicate and therefore have multiple bodies in multiple areas at the same time? I mean, these are cases that have been reported in history and even here in Romania at the place where we have the Pranic Festival, there's been a saint who was living in a cave in the mountains. In 94, he has ceased to live on earth and he was doing all these things that I just mentioned. So. It makes you want if contemporary and well-known people are able to have these capacities, what can we do? That's a, the, the question that everyone should ask. And in, if everyone would ask and follow this question deeper, a pandemia like this one would be just a flu, as I call it. <laughs> that's, my, that's my opinion. Agreed. <laughs> And I have seen, um, I have seen uh, now a friend was just announcing me that doctors are starting to have a new way of looking at things and a new way of looking at numbers and that some numbers that have been published or vehiculated in press might not be so true. And uh, I believe that many people have healed from the situation. I've had cases in in my uh, proximity, you know, people I know or people have participated in the planning process that, ha that have healed in four days. And close friends of mine also, and myself also have healed this. So is it really that is something to be feared or is something to be raising questions about what we do with our bodies and our energy? So, uh, there is no proper scientific answer to that because uh, uh, although it's generally elder people beyond 60 suffer more and people who have diabetes and hypertension suffer more than others, but there are young people also who, who suffer. So it is nobody is immune that way. But the role of mind is very important. The role of immunity is important. Uh, the uh, way the person has contracted virus, that is also important. Uh, how best, uh, you know, it takes the measures, as I said, to remove virus from the throat by gargling or taking nasal inhalation, that is also important. So it's very complex and whether the drugs really have any role in prevention or treatment, I'm not very sure. Mm -hmm. Nor the science also agrees uh, at one particular point, but maybe. So ultimately it is the life force that is what is important. That's what I, I personally feel. And from observing yogis like Hiraratan Mane, 
who was uh, doing sun gazing for a long time and he's uh, even had proven that he, his pineal gland is way bigger than a normal one <laughs> due to sun gazing and probably due to other practices or maybe he was born like that what do you think yeah, maybe it is due to sun gazing and uh, because sun gazing produces uh, effect through retino hypothalamic tract and that may be innervating pineal glands and that chronic hyperactivation of the gland might result into not only hyperfunction but hypertrophy of the gland also. So it is possible. So from one case study, we cannot say that all of them have enlargement of pineal gland. Absolutely. But, but the you know functioning of the gland might be higher in most of the cases like that. And uh, also you have monitored Pralajani. I don't know if I'm pronouncing correctly. Hopefully I am who uh, has proven in your hospital for 10 days and then for 14 days that he's able to survive without food or water. And he's now said to be in that state without food or water for 75 years, if I'm not mistaken. So having studied these uh, extraordinary people, what is your conclusion about the capacity of the human body? And also if you can share some of the conclusions of the study as well, it would be great. Um, I think, uh, Shia, if you don't mind, I have some another meeting at uh, six o'clock and uh, we will just finish this and whosoever is there online, we may start after that because the subject that I'm going to speak is also very lengthy and... Uh, yes, whatever. yes. So go ahead and then uh, yeah. whatever you feel to uh, approach, you have yeah. to state for yourself. Uh, I know. <laughs> Because, uh, as I mentioned, uh, I have some other... Definitely. Uh, Go ahead. So as far as this uh, question is concerned, Prahlad Jani has uh, been without food and water for quite some time. But we cannot uh, testify that because we have studied twice in the hospital, once for 10 days, another time for 15 days. And we can certainly say that during this study period. He did not eat, did not drink anything, he did not pass urine, did not pass food. So that's a very amazing thing on the earth. And why important? Because first time it is documented in the scientific way, highly scrupulous technique we are used in, multiple level of, uh, uh, you can say, checking was done. Mm. And a lot of scientific data was also generated. But I think that one single case opens up lots of uh, possibilities. And we are very much excited that in uh, coming days, we will uh, know more about his genes and uh, how other people can copy his technology. Maybe in future genetic engineering, we could also do. So, yes, you're right, this is a great case. And in past, there are such yogis on record in the textbook of autobiography of yogi, in uh, textbook of Swami Anand, also in the Western literature, Theresa Newman, and other people. And there are uh, yogis I've met in Austria, Germany, and other areas. So I think, uh, there is not one person, there are many. Absolutely. And people like you who are just on next to nothing. <laughs> <laughs> yes, uh, I'm a work in progress, I must admit. I'm not bribing about my frantic state just yet. But for me, not eating is not the target. The consciousness is the target and I'm sticking to that. <laughs> But my body has proven to me that it can stay without food or water and that is uh, functioning uh, even better sometimes without external um, resources. Just, Correct. I, I wouldn't be a case to uh, monitor just now. <laughs> yeah. So nice. Thank you. 
Yes, so uh, just please do continue with your presentation. I know you've prepared a lot of material, so I'm just uh, happy to hear. So, uh, are there some people there already or what is yes, the Yes, yes, people will be watching on YouTube and also they'll be watching the recording. So they don't join us on Zoom. In case you are expecting them to be on Zoom, they're not gonna be on Zoom because they will over clutter the, the Zoom transmission. So everybody watches on YouTube live. All right, so okay. I so, share the screen. Absolutely. And uh, yeah, now can you hear me? I hear you very well. Just wow. the screen is not shared yet. Is um, still you on the screen? Okay, so, so how do we do that? Uh, there's a, an option in your bar if Heli could help, maybe, because she's done it before. <laughs> She could help you with sharing the screen. Sharing screen a lot of programs. Can it help? Thank you, Heli, infinitely for your help. <laughs> Share screen is uh, there. Okay. There you go. Okay. Is that fine? Yes, we see you very. We see the screen, your screen, very well. Your presentation, yes. Um, I'm not seen, right? Or do I have to be there? Uh, you are above the screen, so it's okay. Okay, fair enough. So let's start. So um, first of all, thank you very much, Christiana, for giving me this wonderful opportunity. <laughs> Happy. Easter to all of you and have a wonderful Sunday ahead. Today I'm going to share my thoughts on meditation, particularly focusing on the art of meditation in the Indian spiritual context, some of the Western techniques also. And if time permits, we will see some of the scientific aspects of the meditation. Thank you. Okay. So, this subject falls into the territory of neurotheology, that is the sub-branch of neurology, where we deal with the scientific aspects of the spiritual practices. And we need to we evolve some scientific uh, evidence to prove the scientific practices. As for example, meditation to most of the scientists and neurologists in the West was a kind of a hallucination and not real a neurological event. But after the seminal work of uh, Professor Andrew Newberg, amongst others, it is now very clear that it's a neurobiological event and it is reproducible. That's how it has become a hardcore science. That is neurotheology. My limitation is that I am a uh, neurologist, I do practice meditation, I have studied science of meditation, but I am not uh, that great yogi or expert of meditation that way, nor I am a very hard scientist, you know, who has worked tremendously on this subject. So my role is more of a coordination and compilation of data. And of course, I've done some work which will show I will be showing in my presentation. So that is my limitation. If you ask me what I can offer to the world in my best possible way, then I would say meditation. If I can spread the word of meditation, I can teach people meditation, I can engage more people to learn meditation, I think my job is done. And that is the reason why I'm taking up this subject today. The presentation is in two parts. The first part is ancient wisdom, and the second part is the modern science uh, supporting the uh, research. You know, I will try to be as uh, brief and as uh, precise in my talk so that now we have only 45 minutes or so, and whatever I can show you in that, I will try and finish. So. First question that people ask why we should do meditation. Well, 
we know that we exist at least in three forms body mind and to some of us who believe in prana and all that we know that consciousness and the soul uh, is a third existence and unfortunately it's, it's a, an irony that uh, we get up in the morning we brush our teeth we we take breakfast we take bath we we groom ourselves we go out for work we do a lot of activities uh, earn money earn fame come back eat food go to club and see movies etc so all activities are body centric however have we ever bothered to know what could be the act of brushing teeth of mind how do we groom our mind how do we feed it how do we take care of the health of mind no we are not taught to do that that is very curious although we know that our exact existence like body is mind also and we don't know how to take care of it and for those of us who believe in the ultimate power the soul i think we hardly ever think about it many of us don't believe in that that is the unfortunate part of the story so bow meditation dear friends is one way to take care of mind as we do everything for mind and that is the you can say it is grooming bathing brushing eating giving food or whatever nourishing mind and that is meditation most of us are in search of peace and happiness and we come to understand after a whole lot of fourth decade fifth decade or sixth decade of life that well wow, i was looking for happiness and peace outside in different objects and subjects but it's not there and those of us who are lucky ultimately start descending inside our own selves and that is the journey inside and that is what we call as meditation and that gives us the real peace and happiness happiness and peace are not outside they are inside most important thing is have we ever tried to understand what is the cause of our miseries what is the root cause of our all unhappiness well it is our aspirations our desires our thoughts our perversions our emotions our ego our mind wandering between past and future our attitude these are the root cause of miseries and that produces unhappiness now we never bother to see what is going inside us so the meditation is a process through which you try to know what are your aspiration how your thoughts run what is the quality of your thoughts how your emotions work and why you have ego what kind of uh, attachments you have and what attitude you carry so the process of self observation and then self refining is meditation many of us are in quest of god and all those great people who were looking for god they all did meditation may it be lord mahavir lord buddha lord shiva or jesus today is easter day if you have read you know the details of bible he did 40 days fasting and then a lot of meditation used to do same way prophet Muhammad Ashwad Arthus and in the recent days Krishna Murthy ji Vivekanand Raman Maharshi and I'm sure a lot of saints of the western continent they are all in meditation so meditation is the basic process for any person who wants to sublime and to see the god would have to do and therefore meditation is must for all those who are seeking god those who are seeking truth or those who are seeking uh, ultimate bliss and happiness so then the next question that comes is what is meditation it's an exercise of mind to keep it healthy and clean as we do for body it's state of altered consciousness in neurology we call it fourth state of consciousness it's a spiritual ecstasy with the neurological manifestation and mind you will see in the later part of the presentation how exactly the biological event occur how the circuit is formed how the neurotransmitters are released and what is the 
in different routes through which the whole thing will work. And then exactly if I remind it is reproducible from person to person. So it's not really a hallucination, it's a neurobiological event. But the caution I want to raise here is that ultimately these are all experiences and all those self experiences cannot be always reduced to all biological event or physiological event and everything you cannot map. It is not all experiment, it is experience. So maybe all these things can never be captured in the purview of science. That is the point that I want to make. Now the definitions. Now, when I talk to brilliant people across the world, you know, people came with different notions and I'm sure all of you carry different notions. To some, meditation is stability of mind. To others, it's when wavering of mind is stopped. Some say, no, meditation is concentration on target. Some say, no, it is a unified thought process. Some say it is thoughtfulness. Some say it is introspection. Some say it is lack of activity. Some say, no, it is just to leave mental aerobics, some say it is self-regulation, dedication, etc., etc. So all these people are right ultimately because, and we'll see how they are right. There are different techniques and different methods. Ultimately, they converge on a common denominator. So what is the dictionary definition of meditation? Thinking deeply or spiritually about a subject. It's a complex cognitive task. It's more than relaxation, concentration, contemplation, or posture. It frees the mind from distractions and allows for communication with the master within. The ultimate goal, enlightenment, illumination, that is the goal of meditation. Now, people ask me so many times, we may do meditation and enlightenment may be a little process which may come up later, but what advantages we can literally see and measure? Well, there are lots of studies, scientific studies, and to summarize, there are physical, mental, and emotional uh, advantages health-wise. Uh, it helps in curing or controlling so many psychosomatic disorders, including blood pressure, coronary, diabetes, asthma, etc. I don't want to make a statement that these are all cured, but many of them can be controlled or reasonably uh, cured. Stress relief is one of the important outcome, which is a very rampant problem in the world today. It brings spiritual health, better concentration, sharpness, meditation produces relaxation response, it improves job performance. Those who are doing meditation, you see the way they perform, they have their interpersonal relationship. In fact, their whole attitude towards the world changes. There is the inner peace, patience, and happiness. They're all positive emotions. They never talk of negativity. That it helps in controlling anger and conquering fear. As Kishya was asking me, a lot of people are here about this corona and other aspects. But you know, a meditator would be largely able to control fear. It brings control over thought process. It improves life quality. More importantly, those who are on the higher stages of meditation develop a kind of intuitive knowledge. They have healing power. The personality is magnetic and they have occult powers. I'm sure you must have come across such people who have you know these kind of higher abilities and uh, and these are the people who are on the pranic energy those are the people who are doing meditation and these are the people who can change the world meditation is an antidote to stress and that has been proved in research it's an overactivity of sympathetic system is uh, stress and uh, meditation is over activity of parasympathetic system. For those who are not conversant with this medical term, sympathetic system is a system of fight or flight, you know. When you are confronted with some bad experience or some frightful thing, either you fight or you run away. And your body is on fire, so your pulse is high, your BP rises, your heart 
comes faster and your breathing becomes faster. So all these are fight response. In meditation, there is exactly opposite neurochemistry. A yogi's or a meditator's uh, pulse is quite low, maybe 50 or 60 per minute. If pulse respiration is low, 10, 6 per minute, blood pressure falls lower side and patient is in a calm, serene mode. So that is meditative mode, your yogic mode. Before we embark on the journey of meditation, I would like to give some cautions. You know, meditation is not an easy game. It is not a push button system that, oh, I, I press the switch and then I am just into meditation. No, meditation requires hard work, patience. There is a very high dropout rate amongst meditators because you need to have right guide, right method, correct understanding, appropriate place, constant practice, extreme faith and full conviction. Meditation is not sleeping. You have, it's a different state of consciousness. Now the meditator kind of people, you know, they sell meditation. It has become a billion dollar industry. And just commercialization, like current, beware of such people who sell meditation for dollars, etc. The real meditation is free of charge. It is the highest gift to mankind. All priceless things on earth are always free. May it be peace, may it be happiness, may it be respect, may it be love. They are never charged. And if you charge, I think it's no more that priceless thing. And lastly, don't make comparison between different systems. All systems are great. You know, some people do with other techniques, others do other techniques, and they say, no, my technique is better, and that's not the case. Believe me, all techniques are great as long as you practice properly and you are conversant with it, you can do great. Krishnamurti ji said. Meditation is hard work. It demands the highest form of discipline which comes through constant awareness and not only of the things about you outwardly but also inwardly. So those advantages which I mentioned, physical, mental, emotional, job performance and uh, you know, magnetic personality and healing, that is all right. The real purpose of meditation is to learn to remain in the present moment. That's very important. Because most of our miseries are, the reason is our mind is moving between past and future, between one continent to other continent. And we don't learn to remain in this present moment. This present moment is full of love, happiness, and peace. And we have to learn to do that. And Meditation exactly teaches that. Meditators' ego is abolished, so it is very important these people are polite. Ultimately, the purpose of learning meditation is to calm down all the activities of mind. What are the activities of mind? We learn the root cause of miseries. Remember? Thought, desires, ego, attitude, mind wandering between past and future or perversions, attachment, all these are the root cause of misery. And these are all functions of mind. And meditation exactly teaches to get rid of all these faulty processes. And that is why we call it mindlessness and meditation teaches that. In the Indian spiritual text, and I'm sure in Western text, it would be so that uh, the ultimate philosophical and spiritual purpose of meditation is self-realization. In Maslow's way, it is self-actualization, God-realization, total bliss and uh, total liberation. That is the ultimate purpose of meditation. So friends, we do meditation not for removing our arthritis or asthma or blood pressure or diabetes, no. These are the byproducts. Our main intention is to do this. So let's understand what are the different techniques that has been developed so far. 
when I was trying to classify different meditation techniques, it falls into the main eight categories. One may do focus on breathing, one may learn uh, focusing on an object, concentrating on light or some other photo of a deity or something like that. Some may do meditation on sound, so breathing meditation, object meditation, sound meditation, thought meditation. What is sound meditation? Chanting some mantra or listening to some beautiful sound or listening to distant sound. That is focus on the sound. Focus on the thought, you just carry one thought in a stream and continuously focus on that thought, like let the whole world be peaceful. That is a thought. And then continuously you focus on that. Or there is another open monitoring system of thought where you observe the volley of thoughts that passes through your mind one after other, one after other, without doing any judgmental, critical evaluation, just observe the thought. That is open monitoring of thought. You can have sensual object fo uh, focus or focus on a sensory perception or imagery or one of the topmost meditation techniques, no more difficult, is soul meditation. But as I said, all these techniques are good and you can choose any of them, but some are a little more difficult in that sense it is higher, okay? You'll be surprised to know at least I was surprised when I was studying the different meditative techniques. The meditation includes a complex group of techniques, belongs to different cultural traditions. Indian tradition, classically Buddhist, Jain tradition, Sanatan, that is yoga, Rajyog tradition. In Chinese tradition, there is Taoism and Jain Buddhism as a main. In Western tradition, there is a Christian, Hebrew, Islamic, some of them are mystic traditions. So meditation was there right from beginning in all different parts of the world in different way. Some people have highlighted, some religions have not highlighted as much. Then the next question comes uh, for a beginner, how one should enter into the process? Now, once you are destined and you, you are convinced that you want to meditation, you should fix up a position, place, and it must be like a fixed place in your house, in your terrace, or wherever. And do initially on that place regularly. Sitting posture is advisable not to lie down. Time of meditation should be fixed either early in the morning, four o'clock, five o'clock, six o'clock, or late in the night. Consistency is the most important rule. Your mouth should be clean, the body should be clean, your place should be clean, the clothes should be clean. They are called four purities. What is the mental attitude you should bear? That is bear attention or neutral witness, nothing more, just bear attention. You are an observer, you are not criticizing anything that is going to happen. It's a pure moment-to-moment -moment awareness or mindfulness, non-judgmental inner listening equanimity, right? That is what is the meditation. For the beginner, you may ask to do some prayer or little pranayam breathing technique. But it's not a prerequisite. If you do, it's fine, but it's not necessary. Because sometimes through this, you get connected to the main highway, that is your broadband of internet, that is your pranic highway, where you can log in faster. That is the point. So we have understood that different techniques, breathing, focusing on objects, sound, thought, etc. And out of these eight techniques, at least in India, there are 128 different techniques that have been uh, classically described in the spiritual texts, which are as old as 2000, 2500 years. And then they are Patanjal Dhyan system, Anapan, Satishmati Upasthan, Vipashyana, Preksha Dhyan, Jain Dhyan, Spand Dhyan, Mantra Dhyan, Navi Dhyan, Sopna Dhyan, Nidra Dhyan, Yoga Nidra. 
transcendental meditation, Kundalini, Jain, Kaya Tratak, Surya Namaskar, Anup Dhyan, Arup Dhyan, Purna Yog Dhyan, Ati Dhyan. Ati Dhyan is meditation of the past event and Bhavi Dhyan is the future event. So it's a projection. Tata, dynamic meditation, Sahad Dhyan, Sufi Dhyan, Crystal Dhyan, heart meditation and lot of all these methods are great and you can develop your own system also. Scientifically, they are divided into three broad categories. Some of them have focus attention at the system. Others have open monitoring like, you know, just observing with a non-judgmental awareness. Here you are concentrating, you are, you are not concentrating, you are just observing silently what is happening. Here. And the third is transcendental meditation. And I'm sure you know about Mahesh Yogi who has popularized this system, a very useful technique. And a lot of studies have come up on this system, this system, and even focus attention. If you go to internet, you'll find so many peer-reviewed articles on different meditation systems. I would have loved to take great details of all different techniques, but uh, I'm sorry, there's a constraint of time and uh, I'll just narrate a couple of them in uh, very briefly. Patanjal Rajyog system is uh, popularized by Sankhya Yogi Patanjal Roshi Yogi, who said that uh, meditation the word is dhyan, that is meditation, is not the ultimate goal of human existence. Ultimate goal is nirvana, samadhi, liberation, identifying with the universal consciousness. And just to achieve that, meditation is the final step. And beyond that, you are into samadhi. But he says that every Tom, Dick and Harry cannot attain dhyan or samadhi. We have to observe certain principles, rules, and uh, disciplines. Says that <clears throat> non-violence, ahimsa, speaking truth, non-stealing, celibacy, remaining faithful to your spouse or renouncing the system. And four, fifth is aparira, meaning non-collectiveness. Just take from the system of world, whatever is little and minimum for your requirement, rest all you don't collect. So that what is in Yama. Uh, and there are five disciplines they mentioned, purity of body, mouth and uh, clothes, etc. You do some kind of penance, maybe you observe fasting or you may eat less or you may do some kind of uh, austerity, whatever. Then say satisfaction is a prerequisite. You have to do day spiritual reading, learning, and then worship God himself what you believe and dedicate. So these, unless one is uh, practicing these things, one cannot uh, attain the state of jnana. So we have to start working on virtues and disciplines. It's called Varata and these are Niyam. Then comes the third step, yogic postures. The yoga, the world popular, world popular word yoga you have heard and that is in context to body postures. You must have learned a lot of uh, yogic postures and that is called asana. That is training the body, preparing body for the oncoming steps. So asanas are important to prepare ourselves. Next step is preparing the prana, that is pranayam. And after doing these four steps, the fifth step is pratyahar, withdrawing senses from the different objects. What does it mean that if I have a lot of uh, interest in eating food, I try to restrain myself and keep uh, minimum uh, items of food in my food, my, my, my dish. Like that, from every different objects of five senses, eyes, ear, nose, smell, that is then tongue and touch, all these five senses, we withdraw 
practice activity that is called pratyahara. If we do that, we can do dharana, that is the uh, previous step of uh, meditation where you hold an object in the mind and meditation, dhyana itself means continuous thought process, continuous thought only on that subject which you hold in the mind. And that non-stop continuous thought on only single object or subject without any single break, non-stop when it remains in the mind for a prolonged period of time, then maybe over years or lives practices, one can attain the samadhi, which is a non-dual state, identifying your consciousness with universal consciousness. So in brief, I have tried to, and it is a very deep science. It takes a separate lecture on itself, but this is how Patanjal system works. So here you have to meditate on an object, flame, place, chakra, etc. I think if you read about Vivekananda's Dhyan uh, system, you will come across uh, the details of this. Or you may read Patanjal Yoga Sutra. A very important data is given by a lot of people have written on that Patanjal Yoga Sutra. Then there is another technique which I might like to elaborate, which is very simple and very important and highly scientific. Again, here you have to focus on your breathing. Just observe the breathing as it goes out and comes in. Close your eyes, sit in a posture, sitting posture which is comfortable. Stop all the other activities and just focus your mind on the breath that comes in and goes out. Comes in and goes out without losing a single breath. Just give full attention. You don't have to change the pattern of breathing. You have to just observe the natural breathing, whether it is fast or slow. Whether it comes from the right side of the nose or left side or both noses. Whether it is a long breath or a short breath, whatever it is, without altering, just observe with mind, moment to moment awareness. And when doing so, your attention might wander a little. You might, after two, three breaths, your mind will take you to America or to Corona or this or that. Don't criticize the mind. Bring it back. Very politely ask mind to remain on the breath and make it friend, you know and ask to sit on the breath as it goes in and comes out, etc. And that's the way you uh, become master of your breath. I will ask you will ask me why breathing is so important. Yes, there are a lot of reasons. Friends, there are two truths which everybody will agree that you are, we are born and the second truth that we'll die. But in between, there is another truth that at this moment we are living. We are living because we are we are breathing, and so breathing is a truth. And when we focus on truth, when we focus on truth, we will ultimately go to the final truth. So this is how the breathing helps in attaining the final truth. Final ultimate truth is you know what I'm talking about. Secondly, breath is vital. Without breath, we will not be here. So we are focusing on vital element and therefore focusing on vital will take you to the vital. Breathing is secular. There is no religion attached to it. Everybody has a breath and so there is no nothing like Christianity, Mohammedism, Hinduism. So those who don't have those kind of religious tag for everybody, the, this, uh, this is a kind of meditation which everybody can take up. I have a uh, question. Very handy. Hello. Yes. Uh, uh, I have a question connected to breathing. Can I ask now or towards the end? What would be better? Uh, let me finish breathing within a couple of minutes and then we ask, okay? Okay. Uh, then... Um, Another thing is, is, it's always with you. Breathing is a handy thing. Whenever you are traveling or you are in outside America or wherever, breathing is handy. Otherwise, if you are focusing on an object or something, you know, you will have to carry that thing. Here, 
in your car also you can do your home you can do so it's always handy breathing is a present tense so remaining in this moment breathing is the best teacher to remain in the present tense more importantly it's a career of mind the thoughts emotions our perversions all travel on the breathing like if you are angry your breathing pattern changes if you are calm your breathing is different if you are jealous your breathing is different if you are fearful it is different so all thoughts emotions they travel on your breathing while you are observing breathing at some stage at automatically there is a feedback mechanism so whenever your breathing changes you learn to understand that, oh look there is something going on inside and that way so that auto feedback you will be able to change your thoughts and emotions for good so breathing has multiple reasons and that is why we have to learn this technique and you have to continue watch breath accepting each moment as it is and we should try at least for an hour and without losing single breath but for the beginner for every second third fourth fifth breath initially the mind will wonder we have to keep it back with practice of 4 to 6 months we will be able to remain on the breath for continuously 50 60 breaths and so on so we have to keep on trying it teaches us the power of now and when within takes consciousness into each cell there is a vital dance as yogi has mentioned the textbook when the breathing becomes identified with your consciousness at that level your every cell becomes uh, vital it is uh, nourished with prana and it it, it 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 joins the vital dance of the universe so that's the way uh, a little about the breathing meditation yes krishna what we are asking yes since um, you know most people say uh, connect pranic nourishment with breatharianism and they call it breatharianism correct uh what is your intake of, uh, what is your opinion about this name that is given to pranic nourishment i have and most of us have all, our own perception about this term but we wanted to hear your opinion is it accurate to call it breatharianism uh since it's somehow connected to breath or do you think it it you know what is your opinion well uh, breath is your uh, physical level pran is at the uh, mental and emotional level and the ultimate uh, consciousness and soul is at the you know deepest level so to me breathism sounds uh, applicable only for the general term uh, for those who don't uh, want to know about prana but ideally technically it is much deeper so the the pranic uh, is a better word to my mind breathism is a very superficial word thank you that's for what my person thank you for that i i totally support your opinion and your uh view on it because i we always say that we're not not actually nourished by breath breath only safe self regulate our brain waves and our inner state and the vayus the subtle um winds of the body but it doesn't actually provide nourishment because in pranic um lifestyle actually the nourishment comes from within it comes from our inner energy and not from external via breath sound sun uh, other things yeah yeah we call it srota and all that uh vishna i was just wondering after 15 20 minutes uh, when we end up i think we'll have to keep another session the some of the other days because uh, if am i going uh, properly for the yes or everybody, do everybody sees and hears you there's also questions on uh, our page that people are asking and if you are willing to take questions the people that have joined can use the chat box either below or next to the video uh, in youtube or in our landing page to ask question to dr sa and i will read them to you somebody just ask a question now and if you want i can ask you or wait for later what do you prefer uh 
my suggestion is this way i will talk for another 10 15 minutes then we will have question for 5 10 minutes then we will take another session maybe tomorrow and then a day after tomorrow and that's how in three session we'll finish this if that is okay and every time we'll take questions uh -huh. does that sound okay or you want to finish today then i just run over the next uh, because i've come only on 28 slide and there are 100 slides so <laughs> that's beautiful well, we might want to schedule the next meetings for uh, another date because for now we don't really have tomorrow and the day after tomorrow free um and uh, we might continue but we have to talk on uh, whatsapp and see what other dates are available i would be no happy take your time to schedule uh, right now uh, right now let me see how much i can do in next 15 20 minutes and then take some question then some other time right absolutely that okay? thank you very much Bye. I hope people are enjoying, right? Yes, okay. yes, 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 sure. yes. So then we move on to other techniques, and that is uh, smriti upasthana. That is uh, uh, meditation on the thoughts. So we took uh, Patanjali system, that is object meditation. Then we talk on breathing meditation technique. Third technique is the uh, thought meditation. Now this was propounded by Buddha, and now recently Krishna Murthy was also one of the great uh, admirer of the system. And here they wanted to say that don't conflict with your mind. You don't try to control your thoughts. As we mentioned earlier, the root cause of miseries is thoughts, emotions, etc. And thoughts is one of the most powerful. most powerful thing so in this system one has to study the thought itself the beginning of the thought the end of the thought the structure of the thought the content of the thought so one has to sit quietly and observe the thoughts as it you know one like in a pond if you throw a stone uh, ripples come up one after other like that the volume of thoughts pass through mind every second it is said that uh, man has at least 25000 thoughts per day and women have 30000 thoughts a day i don't know what those 5000 extra thoughts are for but <laughs> you do want to know <laughs> but <laughs> But that's a scientific fact, okay? Yes, so I think it's you right. Have to, you have to very non-judgmentally focus on the thoughts, sitting quiet, study the beginning, study the end, study the structure and content of thoughts. Please do not criticize. Observe and know your thoughts. Study the movement of mind and feel separated. this will lead to detachment with thoughts with you know how that happens when when you are observing your thought one after the other without criticizing what happens you realize that there is one particular thought about a person that this person is very good then some other thought comes third thought comes the different thoughts then the fifth thought comes about the same for oh no that person is not that good that time he did this to me so you start criticizing then after a few minutes again the thought for the same person comes no no that fellow had helped me in my critical time so you try to understand the thoughts are contradictory they they are empty they they don't have any real meaning or content they are useless and they are bothering us they are occupying space in our brain so by observing the thoughts without much criticizing just studying them you study the movement of your mind and you feel separate like oh these things are not part of me this is something else agency of mind is creating all this so this will lead to detachment with the thoughts when you have contradictory thoughts you understand that these are not of any useful connotation 
like if your neighbor comes daily to you while you are having your tea or breakfast and then every day he talks something bad about different people different neighbors after a few days you will start ignoring you will close the door like that by these thoughts if you really study in this particular matter you become detached with the thought and you become aware of your own consciousness because when thoughts disappear the consciousness manifests this is a wonderful technique and observer will, will realize that himself is being observed and there is a more to it but i just tried to give you the nutshell then maharshi arobindo did modification and he said purna yog technique and there you have to empty your thoughts and know your mind he gave three step uh, manifestation that is aspiration uh, rejection and surrender aspiration of a higher mind rejection of negative thoughts and surrender to the almighty that is the step and these are all very intricate things and uh, we don't have much time today but this is how it is then there is a jain meditation uh, technique and here i am a jain so uh, i know uh, how different it is from other techniques here there is also qualitative meditation in here you have to focus on only positive thoughts about your own soul your liberation your own uh, karmas and all how you can get rid of all this uh, drama and uh, that is called shukla dhyana and dharma dhyana and there are other meditations also in jainas we have specific rituals called samaik where you have to sit for 48 minutes just focusing on your soul and doing some spiritual ascetic techniques or just read uh, spiritual texts then there is a technique called kaya sarg technique there is preksha vipassana granthi ved etc so there are different texts uh, even one of the jain texts mentions about uh, the padastha pindastha rupastha and rupati these different ways of doing meditation but in jainas the ultimate uh, technology technique of meditation is atmadhyana lord mahavir the last the tirthankar of jain religion in uh, darshan he mentioned that you have to wean your soul with your own soul and you have to meditate on your soul with your own soul so he said all, all other external things are not of that much importance all these objects or sounds or this are useful to some extent beyond a certain limit you have to finally focus on your soul only with your soul very interesting phenomenon and uh, this requires a little more advanced training but i think this also works so there are different uh, as you can see on the picture uh, on the heart uh, lotus there are different vengeance that we are taught to focus and meditating on the soul is one of the final meditation according to jain religion to remain constantly aware of the soul and its characteristics and its function to dissociate soul from the body at every moment and apply the knowledge sentiments to the ultimate uh, liberation that is and lord mahavir used to teach his uh, finest disciple gautam which is called goyama samayam api maap may goyama don't be unaware for a fraction of a second every second be alert attentive quiet calm and compassionate and remain in a very alert state so that not a single bad thought comes through your mind not a single bad word you speak it through your tongue not a bad deed you do with your body all three major aspects are completely under your control that much alert from fraction of second to next fraction is required and that is the technique of uh, learning meditation the basic requirement in jain religion and why thought till 1995 when i was learning neurology i was taught that thoughts are all abstract and you don't have any representation they are you don't know who can think what and you don't have influence on everybody's thought but no 
the spec machine single photon emission computerized tomography machine said that you can depict each of your thought in different parts of the brain if you have calm and prayerful mode this part of the brain gets activated if you are fearful the left amygdala gets activated if you are angry some this part is get activated if you are uh, peaceful uh, different circuit is activated so every thought every emotion is atomic and that is what lord mahavir used to tell your in every single thought every single emotion every single word is atomic it recoshes inside you and goes to the universe and comes back so be very careful in your single thought single word that you speak and the single action because it has a effect on the whole across the universe if you disturb a single atom here the whole universe atoms are disturbed that is called max principle and if you know uh, this spooky action of the universe uh, by you know einstein same thing so it is applicable to all the lives also if you disturb one life here if you injure one life here if you kill one life here the whole life of the universe is disturbed and that is the reason why you are seeing all these calamities on the earth because we have destroyed so many lives we have disturbed so many living beings and we have disturbed nature so that is what uh i think meditation teaches us to be you know very contented and watchful in what we do and we don't harm anybody in whatsoever form that is meditation and therefore similarly there is another meditation called sound meditation now uh, hazrat inayat khan mentioned that since all things are made by the power of sound or vibration as christian and jashmu and everybody is keeps on telling our vibration and i entirely concur to what they say uh, nadim also talks of vibration so can we create this world by the same power the knowledge of sound is supreme for it is beyond all form by the knowledge of sound we obtain the knowledge of creation and the mastery that the knowledge helps us to rise to the formless this knowledge acts as a our wings helping us to rise from the earth to heaven and penetrate to the seen life seen and seen so what it means that sound is one of the basic uh, uh, energies of the universe and when you chant mantra like om or whatever amen or whatever uh, there is a vibration and it has a meaning so uh, these percolates to the whole universe atom by atom and life by life and that creates a specific resonance frequency and therefore whatever we speak we should speak with truth with love with kindness and my colleague professor moto decided to see how thoughts and words affected the formation of untreated crystal water crystals i'm sure you know the experiment the famous experiment Japanese gentleman by typing words onto paper and then tapping them on glass bottles overnight. When he tap uh, overnight the glass bottle, love and appreciation kind of words, the water crystals were like diamond. And when he mentioned, "I will kill you, you make me sick," you know, even the water crystals get this kind of horrifying uh, crystal formation. So then he studied. Uh, Uh, is this experiment consists of exposing water in glasses of different worlds pictures or music and then freezing and examining the aesthetics of the resulting crystals with microscopic photography and uh, you know these are the uh, sound frequencies that affect water molecules like distilled water beethoven concert effect heavy metal music thank you effect let's do it uh, effect do it there is a command effect and so and so forth so every word has a meaning and therefore the mantras are also a very powerful way of conveying some meaning. you know what iron and magnet both are chemically iron 59 fe 59 but in the magnet the alignment of an atom is in such a way that it carries lot of uh, power and attracts it 
similarly mantra chanting is mantra is nothing but the alignment of words in such a superb way that it attracts power and that's how the mantras are powerful and if you go on chanting repeating the same thing over years and years and those mantras have been visualized by great sages in their high deep consciousness with meditation i think they must be surely having a lot of profound effect and if you repeat anything it becomes true you know the gobel theory so there are a lot of reasons why chanting and sound as effect and therefore people do sound meditation sound meditation can be done two ways like if you hear some specific connotations like om or om rim ram nam om namo narayana or whatever mantra or whatever sequence of words you want to do or just say oh i love you oh let earth heal the human kind that is also a mantra and then you repeat in a specific resonance a specific frequency that creates the effect and those positive vibes those positive words have profound effect and if we do all together in form of prayer it has even more profound effect i'm sure christian i would have uh, demonstrated the effect of uh, joint prayer that we all did the other day and how it uh, changes the resonance of frequency how of did you, earth how did you feel me how did you feel how did you feel excellent tremendous and i want you to do daily for all people who ever can join make it a constant effort and it will gradually you know take its own moment across the world i must compliment you guys because wonderful way you must do and all of the you know people who are connected to us at a specific time we should all connect and maybe everybody may not be able to do every day but whoever i think that's a wonderful way well the good and you must do the good news is that uh, today we we start 8 uh, days uh, process where we meditate every day also and the fr the pranic festival is also a gathering that is oh, great. is helping people focus on something great or on, on something uplifting and it's like a living prayer that was wow. <laughs> so i you know so my this uh, discussion or whatever little i know i'm parting would be a preamble to that i'm 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 happy that i could uh, show some of the work good so uh, coming to last few slides of today and then we will uh, take some questions so similarly there are some uh, uh, there are different ways of doing sound meditation you create a sound or listen to a sound or close your eyes ears and sit in a very serene distant place and from your ears just open slowly and try to eliminate the near sounds and then go on focusing to a very distant sound that's a very uh, specific technique we have to learn how to eliminate near sound and focus on distant sound and that the more and more you focus to distant sound you have developed a capacity to look at the future look at the thoughts of other persons mind it's a very i would call it a very mystic way of uh, learning uh, thoughts of other people or helping other people by changing their thought process i know a couple of uh, mystics who do that i made one of them and i i'm sure he, they have profound they were just sitting in front of him and he started proclaiming what was all going through my mind and he answered the question that i used to carry for years that look so the real these questions and these are the real answers of those cosmic questions so this is what uh, people can achieve as no joke i have myself have experience from people so these are different techniques then there is a technique called prakshadyan and uh, vipassana and uh, <clears throat> this is an open monitoring system where you are not altering anything you are not focusing anything you are observing to see is vipassana to specifically see is vipassana you focus first on breathing as we discussed then you focus on thoughts so you can detect thought thoughts and then you focus on your body perception 
and sensations. So at every second on our body, there are thousands and millions of sensations uh, appearing and disappearing. In this technique, after mastering breathing and thoughts, you can, you are qualified to look at the bodily um, sensations. And after three and a half days of uh, anapansati, that is breathing mastery, on fourth day, you are given this uh, technique. And here, you are able to see different uh, kind of sensation from head to toe, you have to keep on watching. There are some which are uh, pleasant, some are unpleasant, some are thick, some are thin, some are, uh, you can say, tingling, some numbness, some heaviness, some coldness, some uh, some heat, whatever different sensation on different parts of the body. You have to just observe them without judgment or criticism. Just observe and find that everything is very transient, temporary. It vanishes within a second. So that teaches us that everything that is composed will decay. And therefore, everything is immortal. Everything is mortal, nothing is immortal. And that takes away our bodily attachment. The, the attachment to our body is the cause of our misery. So if we are now uh, away from the attachment of the body, because we understand that things are quite impermanent and therefore, uh, your uh, attachment to thoughts are gone through thought meditation, your attachment to body is gone, then you remain detached. And that seven days more, you continue doing this. And on 11th day, you become so light that you can see every atom of your body separated from each other. And there is no pain, it's all bliss. And that is a matter of experience. Uh, friends, I am very lucky that I did it twice and I wish that uh, those of you who really want to do um, meditation in a very structured format for continuous 10, 11 days, you have to stay there. You are absolutely like a monk there. And if you can spend, this is one of the techniques. I don't say that this is the only time, but that is one of the great techniques that one can do. So that is Vipassana. Here is the operation of the mind. Who is the disease? Mind is the patient. Operation of the mind, surgeon is also the mind. Operation of the mind by the mind. And which my instruments? Instruments are also of mind. Which are those instruments? Calm and quiet mind. Awake and attentive mind and equanimous mind. So this is how you do operation of your own mind by your own mind. And that is... Uh, the way things are uh, done. And I'm sure uh, this is one of the best. The last technique that we'll talk today is mindfulness practice, observing the body and mind intentionally, letting experiences unfold from moment to moment and accepting them as they are. You have to observe thoughts without getting caught up in them. You don't have to strain or do any effort. Just see what is happening unintentionally okay let the things happen just be a passive it's not a passive process so to say but it, it doesn't involve uh, trying to get anywhere so it's a kind of uh, uh, open monitoring again so you don't get caught into the things yet you are there so in that sense, whatever you are doing, becoming meditation. When you are eating, you are there, you are meditating. When you are sitting, you are meditating. You are working, you are meditating. Every second you are connected, connected to the higher consciousness in a same way. And meditation during each act. And that is the goal of mindfulness practice. You are mindful in each of your activity. Even in your sleep, you are mindful. And that uh, has three rules. Whenever, wherever there is body, the mind should always be there without any exception. So make your mind sit in your body. Don't allow it to wander here and there. Purposefully and tactically bring the mind where the body is. When you are eating, the mind should be there. It should not go anywhere here and there. It cannot think of different distant things. Second, then you try to attain observation that, look, I am here, I am a consciousness and my mind and body are doing this. The mind is 
observing what body is eating. That is the wakeful plane observation. So there is a consciousness behind that. And then that let all other things fall off and your consciousness remains there. That is know your soul with your soul, know your consciousness with your own soul. So that is uh, what is the uh, mindfulness meditation. And then there are different techniques like transcendental meditation that was movement founded by Mahesh Yogi. And you know the different outcomes of TS meditation. People can levitate. But I brought this slide to tell you that we are not doing meditation to show off. Meditation is not to be done to show what you can do miracles. No. Meditation is for liberation, for attainment of uh, God or self-actualization, self-realization. You have to eliminate your ego and you have to be mindless. That is the uh, achievement of meditation. These are the byproducts. Then there is Sudarshan Kriya of Sri Sri Ravi Shankar. Sri Raman Maharshi taught us silence yoga, silence meditation. Just remain silent for hours and years together. In the silence of the heart, God speaks. Let God feel us, then only we speak. Do small things with great love. Then Mother Teresa thought of the service yoga, how you serve humanity. And that's a kind of different meditation. Just get involved into serving humanity. It's a, a different way of looking at it. And of course, uh, dynamic meditation of uh, Osho, where he taught of perfect relaxation, then observership, and then non decisiveness And Purna Yoga, we discuss about aspiration, rejection, and surrender. So friends, these are different meditation techniques and we can speak on each of them for hours together. And I want to convey today, conclude with saying that all these meditation techniques are derived from those eight uh, uh, techniques. These are different methods and you can choose any that suits you, but do it with persistence, consistence daily and uh, do it with diligence, do it uh, by understanding proper method and take help of your proper guide. That's how meditation becomes successful and uh, a lot of other methods also. And I will end my talk with... forgot to mention that initially we discussed about uh, Chinese meditation also and Islamic and uh, this was the Islamic uh, Sufi meditation. This is, uh, there are other techniques like Buddhist meditation, Samatha technique, Vipassana, Jajen, Tanglen. In Chinese system there is Qigong, Tajian, etc. In Chinese uh, Qigong system, there is awareness and self-knowledge by wise use of imagination, sensory development, motor control, and perfect balance. So balancing body and mind and then eliminating all this, uh, you will create a space where the soul or the consciousness manifests. And this is the uh, Qigong meditation. <laughs> start uh, doing meditation first practice silence of body then silence of speech moan then learn to get isolated then uh, chanting seeing an idol do breathing technique etc so the last uh, sentence i will quote here is of rumi rumi the famous uh, sufi poet of turkey mentioned a lot of uh, small, simple sentences with profound meaning. Please do a little favor. Search your own self within yourself. That is the way he said. Search your own self within yourself. Do meditate, my friend. 
and uh, i think with that message we close today's session you i'm open for questions for a few minutes thank yes. you very much for <laughs> thank you for your presentation it was beautiful and very uh, vast uh, you know uh, comprising most of the traditions of the world which is wonderful i um, i'm wondering you. if you can correlate meditation with uh, pranic nourishment how do you think meditation influences the body in a way that allows us to be nourished by prana yeah that is what i was going through different uh, you have compiled those data on pranic healing you have sent me so it will take a couple of while when i you know go through it all and because uh, there must be a wonderful correlation there may be way of uh, chakra meditation or maybe like kundalini and there will be some connection but i have to found, find a proper uh, correlative uh, thing and i i want to take time to you know develop that model i hope that's okay absolutely yeah take your time i i was just uh, maybe uh, hoping for a personal opinion and not necessarily a scientific one Yeah, now we can develop a model. Actually, it is possible. I think our Western scientist friends from California, Nadeem, and all those great guys can help us. There is something to do with quantum physics here. There is something to do with pranic system. There is something to do with chakra. There is some computational model that I was thinking. At appropriate time, I will write to you. Okay. Very beautiful. Uh, another question would be, uh, I'm not seeing your screen anymore <laughs> for some reason. Maybe you really? could exit. Maybe you could exit uh, the screen sharing mode. Okay. okay. There you are. <laughs> uh, another question would be from uh, one of our viewers who asks, Does axiatonal alignment activation accelerate the pranic state? Axi axiatonal alignment. I must confess I didn't hear the term before, but hopefully I, you know what it is. No, I don't know about that. Okay. Maybe if he or she wants to say something, let us hear from you. Uh, at the moment, they're all on YouTube, so she's not connected on uh, Zoom. Oh, mm -hmm. But uh, I've heard of this terminology. I will post the link of Zoom on uh, YouTube so that they can join if they want to. Um, what is your general conclusion after studying Pralat Jani and uh, how does it correlate to the nowadays situation? Would it be beneficial for humanity if we knew more about our bodies so that we don't end up in a pandemic uh, from a flu? <laughs> well, uh... I don't know the exact answer, but I can say that Prahlad Jani has never fell ill. For my knowledge and as per his devotees who are in constant uh, stay with, touch with him. So even for that purpose, uh, Yaratan Manek was never ill. And people like you were so vibrant and so uh, Jashmin also like that. So. You people are blessed with a wonderful physical and mental health and emotional health also. So if you are on pranic nourishment, it automatically means that you are more on the uh, you know, state of health and therefore all these diseases may not affect you. So, uh, but in medical science, how to explain? I don't know. These are anecdotal cases. We have to study at least 50 people with control, and then uh, we can come up with some hypothesis proved. You know, yeah. these are testable. I always have admired your way of navigating through scientific and spiritual notions without uh, making uh, permanent statements. <laughs> That's very oh. good. Well, I, I am trained in a hardcore science way. I studied in Houston, I studied in London. How can I say loose statement? The people, myself, I have to be first convinced, then let people, people get convinced, you know. 
Thank so, you. So, uh, you know, the way we studied Prahlad Jani, my God, we chopped every part of his body and we did a very detailed scientific study. We didn't allow ourselves to get convinced like that. So, scientific brain is open, of course. I'm not a close person, but at the same time, we have to make sure. Yes. Thank you very much. That is why we've created the group of scientists from uh, many areas of the world, from California to India, from to Florida and to Australia and all over the world, uh, joining together now, uh, sharing knowledge. This is the first step uh, to be able to learn more and dive deeper into this subject. And hopefully the research is to follow after which is my personal dream. You know, I don't have a company or an organization. I'm not dealing in any way with either physics or health. I'm mostly a meditation teacher and practitioner and praying nourishment um, experimenter and researcher. But I dream that soon enough, humanity will be moving from anecdotal um, talk about pranic nourishment to scientific in-depth study where we know at least with more accuracy, if not exactly, what the body is doing so that we can then apply it in health, in um, free energy also, and in our own spiritual evolution as well. Uh, that's my personal dream. Uh, and uh, I hope to see it happen before I choose to lose, to leave this uh, planet. Uh, you are doing a wonderful job and uh, with limited uh, so-called resources, uh, with a powerful thought and powerful uh, conviction you are doing all this. So all people across the globe is helping and joining you. I think it is nature's design and it will happen. You are a medium, that's it. Thank you very much. Wonderful, wonderful medium. <laughs> thank you for encouragement. Um, I want to thank you from my heart for being here with us and for taking time from your busy schedule to be able to, um, to sure, talk sure. to us. We're sending you much love and blessings in your activity. Probably you're now uh, har uh, harshly solicited by this uh, thing happening in all the hospitals. And uh, we wish that you stay healthy and uh, cope with the whole thing. Uh, I, I also want to send all good wishes, love, blessings, and uh, prayers for all humanity across the globe. And I wish that uh, let all people heal fast, let there be peace, let there be love, let there be happiness. And I wish that uh, the doctors and nurses and paramedics who are on forefront uh, may be protected. Uh, our prayers may be also more for them. I know as a doctor what it takes to be on the front line. And uh, having fully known the risk you know, of acquiring infection, still all of us are in hard. So, my prayers for all those frontliners, also for police people, for those who are in the battle uh, against this virus. And I'm sure within a couple of months, things should settle down. Let's hope for the best. Yes, uh, yes. Uh, so it is and so it shall be. It's already settling in some countries. We're already past that at the consciousness level. And to encourage that, we are continuing with this festival. So tomorrow we have um, Adam Apollo, a good friend of mine from US, who's going to share about the divine matrix and the connections with physics, quantum physics. Bio time. Yeah, beautiful, uh, beautiful things. And tonight at 8 p.m. Romanian time, 8 p.m. Bucharest time, we start the pranic process online where we take people for eight days through detox at the emotional, mental, and physical level going more on juices, going more on vegetarian and lighter food, oh, and going yeah. in a state, on a higher state of consciousness, so that we can navigate through these times with joy and ease and grace, and most importantly, in health. 
and to spread that through humanity by maintaining a high frequency on the planet. We've had that also at the beginning of, um, um, uh, of March, at the middle of March, and we had people healing also from the flu, and we had people thriving through this process, and tonight we're starting again. So we invite everyone watching to check our website and the links that I posted in the chat box so that they can uh, join us if they want to. Thank you again, Dr. Sa, and see you soon. Thank you. <laughs> Many blessings to you, and hopefully Mataji is also uh, around to receive our blessings and our um, salutation because he's a very good um, support in these times, and we've been feeling his presence uh, along the way since we met in India. I'm referring sure. to Prala Jani and send him our blessings if you meet him. Sure. Thank you. <laughs> blessings. To see you soon and see you everybody tomorrow at 8 p.m. or today during the process. Thank you. Thank you.